So Mark Sidious, we put uh, put word out that Rule of Two was taking some questions. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm actually on Twitter right now, just you're, like you're, trying to back up. You know, like there's like a you know we we opened up the floodgates and like now we might need to you know put the put the put the dam back up. I, I was I was not at all surprised. You know why? Uh, these fans, our fans of uh, Rule of Two, are the best. Yeah, they really are. Um, I'm loving the the conversation. I'm loving that. Some of our podcasts yeah. are even – before you even put out the call, yeah. there are people sending questions. And they were saying, you know, great stuff. I, I want to know. saying yeah all the time. Yeah. Have you been watching Make a, Making a Murderer Part 2? That's all they do. Yeah. All they do is they, they start talking. It's like, oh, yeah, I went down to the prison. Yeah. 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 i got to stop yeah. that. It's just you know, what it is. I think it's a nervous tick or something. Sure. You know, because like we're in like we're in a podcast situation. It's very casual. It's very casual. Yeah. So it's not like I'm seeing it as a casual conversation, mm -hmm. right? And you know, when when I am in, engaged in casual conversation, I do. If I agree with it, it's always like yeah, yeah, yeah until the interruption stop comes. Until like it, you know, hold up. <laughs> right. Did you just say you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you you say <laughs> yeah to <laughs> acknowledge that you're listening. Yeah. And uh, see? see, fuck. And now we're gonna be doing this like gotcha all over damn, again. Damn, Hashtag right, 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 yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I wanted to point out in this little cold opening that yep. um, all the support that we get for Rula Two is phenomenal, and how you guys are are sending these and not just good questions. Great questions. Questions that make me think. Questions that, that open the dam. Which is why like we, speculation. And that's the reason why we wanted to do an episode or at least experiment. Because look, yeah, yeah. let's be real. You know, we don't want to sound like we don't understand the reality of the scale of our audience. Right. Okay. It's not very big, mm -hmm. but I believe it's a loyal audience, mm -hmm. you know, and it's an audience that's highly engaged in having uh, conversations amongst friends about Star Wars, right? It absolutely is. So we were a little hesitant to do a, a, a Q&A type episode because we weren't sure, hey, are we going to get enough questions? And I would say that we got enough questions. Right. But um, it also kind of over the weekend, reading some of this stuff, you know what it did? It, it inspired me. And I thought of something that we could talk about that would be fun. Yeah. Which, and you prepped me on it. And I absolutely love the Love the topic, so I'm great. About so that. Yeah. we're gonna do that. We're gonna take your questions. It's rule of two happening now. Rise. That's right. It's rule of two episode thirteen happening now on oh, the, the podcast. Dan Marino one. Episode. Yeah, the Dan Marino episode, lucky number thirteen happening on the Collider Jedi Council Podcast One feed. I'm your host, Mark Yodi Riley, a.k.a. Darth Rylas, joined, as always, by Mark Fernandez, a.k.a. Mark Sidious. Pleasure Hello, to master. be here. Pleasure <laughs> to be here. So great always talking Star Wars with you. I, I do. Likewise, I love it. Likewise. I really do, and I love that everybody, we, we mentioned it at, the, at yeah, the top of the show. It's just great that somebody will say, you know what, let's sit down for an hour and we commit ourselves with very small deviations that we're going to just talk Star Wars. I just like talking yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, look, at, and like everybody knows, I'm you know the owner and the CEO of Collider, and it's mm -hmm. it's a full time job. It, it really is. You know, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that work here. There's a lot of projects going on. There's a lot of new stuff going on. There's mm -hmm. like all kinds of stuff going on. But you always, you know, one of my favorite lines of Bring Up the Matrix is that you know from the Merovingian, if you don't make the time, yeah, how can you ever have the time? It's a great quote. You know, it's so perfect. I force myself to take some time to talk Star Wars. It's a fringe benefit of the gig. It's so it, – it, and, and I'm glad you did it. I'm glad this worked out this way because we, we, we realize that we like talking Star Wars together. Yeah. And then people are hashtagging Rula2. You're sending your questions. You're giving us feedback, gotcha or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, which thank you for the wonderful the, the gotcha hashtag yeah. was up and running. There were some funny ones. There were some funny ones. Uh, one one comment that I really liked on on the YouTube uh, version of the show is that somebody said uh, the new Star Wars is like McDonald's without the Big Mac. Mm -hmm. You know, and like it it was great. You know, we had that thought, we had that conversation, but we it's did. always fun to hear somebody. 
uh, listen to our thoughts and then and then put it in a little bow for us, you know, wrap it up in a little bow. It really is. And uh, uh, gotcha aside, that was fun. You know, we were talking to Christian Harloff before, who's very disappointed in the fact yeah. that I didn't yeah. know about uh, he, I, be, I believe his words were embarrassment to the fandom. <laughs> yeah. uh, Christian Harloff was just in here right before we started recording and we mm-hmm. were just having a little fun. Mm-hmm. I, in which I said, you know, if you want to know all the Ahsoka dealings and yeah. rebels, um, resistance, all the canon books, comics, everything. You go to Jedi Council. Yeah, for the for the Star Wars conversations. That's all. Deep Daddy dives. walks under the bridge. Yes, Daddy walks under the bridge. I yeah, love that. Let's move on. Those murder bears, Ewoks. Yeah, yeah. Daddy walks under the bridge. Now we move it. on to greater. Th- um, first of all, um, I haven't looked at the questions yet, so I haven't seen yeah. any of them. Hmm. Um, I was a little nervous that we weren't going to get enough questions. You're saying or claiming that we did get a good amount of questions. Got a number of questions. So let's get into them. Let's do the questions. Should we do it that you ask me one and then you ask yourself one? Sure. Well, I would just read it. Um, and then we both you, yeah, chime in. Well, we'll go. Perfect. So we're perfect. going to start there, and then we do have a topic that we're going to dive into. It might take up the entire episode. It could be a short discussion, but we're going to go here first. Um, I grab these questions. This is from Andrew uh, at Fez Greco. And it said, uh, you know, he's wondering if the council will get to the questions because sometimes he doesn't get seen. So hashtags rule of two. And do you think the episodic saga film should end with nine and the the Skywalker saga so the franchise can continue outside of it and spinoffs, TV, new trilogies of films without the episodic numbering? Which this is a big question. This is the reason I wanted to start it because it's coming to us. I have a very simple answer for it. Take it. No. No. Okay. Yeah. I think that the Star Wars saga films, again, is Star Wars. Yeah. Like, whether you like it or not, like, the Bible effectively is the story of David's lineage, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, of Adam's lineage, of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's like certain, you know, um, books, Game of Thrones or whatever, it's okay to have a core um, narrative like piece that's only based on a lineage. I'm totally cool with that. I mean, look the look at the country of England. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, lineages go on. You know, in Game of Thrones, it's fun. My answer to that is like, I'm okay with all this peripheral Star Wars development happening and it mm-hmm. should happen, right? Like there should right. be another lineage that's more focused on the Old Republic. Yeah. One that perhaps is more focused on uh, on Bounty Hunt, whatever the lineages might be, I think it's okay to have that. And I do think when it comes to Star Wars, the saga films is such an appropriate title for that to continue. Mm-hmm. And, and like, look, you know, um, a lot of folks in, in, in the comments were also really liking our theory about 7, 8, and 9 should have been the resolution of Luke Skywalker, Leia, and Han. Mm. And then 10, 11, 12 should have been more about the next generation. Right. So, uh, which so, goes, no. let, me, let me go to your points here yeah. because... So, 10, first of all, do you think yes or no? It's a hard question. Really? For me, it's an easy one. Uh, it, it's a hard one for me because I don't know how episode 9 will turn out. Now, if it feels really satisfying, I can... And right, it. right. But forget forget the travesty. Oof, I can't believe I just said that. Mm. That is the current Star Wars like creative development uh, uh, roadmap. It's all over the like, place, for sure. In its purest form, should the saga films continue past episode nine? Nah. Then you know what? When you put it that way, no, because uh, we are at a point where— or, or continue or stop. I'm sorry. Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah done stop. it. Done yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, because I think that then it starts to be a thing. Then it starts to kind of water down the love we have for everything. Mm-hmm. If you keep going, then it then it feels like, well, they're just slapping on episode ten and putting it out in theaters. So I'm sorry, I'm confused. Are you saying that it should stop or that it should? Yeah, it should. Stop? It, it should, should stop, stop at nine. Yeah. Wow. Because if you do yeah, yeah, ten, like this. One, you, yeah, one debate off the top. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So you wait. Are we confusing the hell out of each other? You want it to continue? I want it to continue. Yeah. I yeah. I think it needs to stop. I think that. And when I when I prefaced it by saying what happens in nine, but to your purest point when you said pure, that's it. It felt like Lucas always just. I know there was maybe rumors he mentioned that there could mm-hmm. be another that's trilogy. That's an interesting episode, counterpoint. You're but saying that Lucas's vision was nine. Lucas's vision was nine. So I want to kind of hold to that. Mm. But 
we don't know. We don't know what nine's going to – if nine ends and I can see another trilogy happen in the saga, it's hard to – the saga means the Skywalkers to me. Yeah. So I kind of want to stop it at some point and know that we have nine films that will always have nine films about the Skywalker saga, however episode nine ends. Yeah. It's hard because then for me, knowing Disney's behind it, Disney, although they're great and I'm enjoying these sequels, Disney's also making you know five Pirates of the Caribbean movies and wants to reboot it. Yeah. Disney's also that. keep – Going, Marvel's a, an outlier because you have Kevin Feige, you have a shared universe, you have comic books for millions of years that have a lot of stories and twists and turns and whatnot. It just feels like it, it'd be time to focus on other areas in the Star Wars universe. You mentioned it, Boba, you know, not Boba Fett, but Bounty Hunters. Obi-Wan. Is it Old Republic? O- Obi-Wan. I would love the Obi Wan movie, yeah. but I think at some point you got to put a pin in it and and try to do st- something different within there. You know, whether or not, you know, the Game of Thrones guys are going to go back to the old Republic, that's what I want to mm-hmm. see. You know what? First of all, all very interesting points. Mm. Um, you thought I was going to say yes because I'm a Luke Skywalker guy. No, no, no. Um, I thought you were going to say yes because in its purest forms, the saga is all we had for a very long time. Mm-hmm. It's very, very powerful. And I think it's a saga that has a lot of legs, mm-hmm. okay, personally. Um, but it, it makes me think about something and this, this is a rabbit hole. Yeah. Okay. It makes me think about something right now. If you had to explore what other tangents to make cinematic content out of the star Wars universe, right? Mm -hmm. You have what we had to date, which was for, uh, uh, um, um, I'm sorry, rogue one, which is really just taking a line out of the opening scroll of mm-hmm. A New Hope mm-hmm. and uh, positioning a film right between um, Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Somewhere, you know, obviously bookending it at the very, very, uh, I'm sorry, not even bookending it, but bumping it up against A New Hope, right? Because right. it's more New Hope, you know, that is Revenge of the Sith. You, right? could re- you could really watch Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One, A New Hope and have a little satisfying so first movie of all, there. One of our Rule of Two uh, commenters um, said that that was their favorite trilogy, mm. which is great. I love that. I love that idea. Re- Revenge yeah. of the Sith, Rogue One, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, A New Hope is a great trilogy. <clears throat> yeah. But it's still within the boundaries of the saga. Correct. Yeah. Right? So then you have the other one, Solo. Okay. Solo also inside the boundaries of the saga, even though I personally think it was not as successful as Rogue One as becoming part of the thing. Yeah. But anyway, besides that, it's like there was this Kessel Run line in A New Hope. Yep. And they make this whole movie out of it, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Now, when people say, what else, what other kind of Star Wars things could you make? Well, everybody always goes to uh, Old Republic. Right Old away. Republic is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And Old Republic also comes out of one line in A New Hope, you know. The Jedi have been protectors for generations or whatever since the days of the the Old Old Republic, Republic, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, Which if – and he was referring to before the dark times, before the Empire. He was referring to the Old Republic, everything we saw in the prequels, right? Right. But But, when when we hear Old Republic, the sweaties, we know that there are books on it. Right. So the Old Republic video game that we so love. There's a lot that could be there. I want to keep, go even further. So so let me finish. Let I me, love this. Allow me to finish. <laughs> well, allow me to retort. <laughs> no. Allow me to finish. What else is there, right? What can we do? Yeah, like is there something that you can do inside the Star Wars universe that still has the Big Mac, right? Mm-hmm. Still has the element of the Force and I think the Jedi to some degree, mm-hmm. but not have it be in any way tied to – this continuum, because we do have a continuum. Even even the old republic is a on the continuum mm-hmm. of like the story of these governments, right? Like the like the Sith Empire and like mm-hmm. the the Republic. Is there stuff happening in other parts of the galaxy that aren't connected to it that that you can create something completely new out of? I mean, I think you can. I think there's so it's, much. Yeah, it's hard, though. Now that I hear myself saying it out loud. Yeah, I, I think I think there's so much you can explore. I mean, I, I start to get creative. I start to wonder what – who was the first Jedi? Right. Who's the first Sith? Yeah. Now we have canon books that are no longer canon <laughs> right. or, or I should have said legends books like 
Darth Bane. Yeah, they talk who, about those things. They talk about those things. That was some of my favorite mm. books, was Darth Bane coming up with the rule of two, which is our namesake. Mm. It was fantastic listening because there was a Sith, like Jedi, like the Jedi Council and the Jedi Padawans and everything. There was the Sith version. Yeah. There was a bunch of them. And Bane took out a bunch of Sith. And Bane comes from the video game. And Bane comes from that video game? From Knights of the Old Republic? I, I think so. I think, and look, gotcha, but well, I, I, know. Think, I, know. I think that the first utterance of Darth Bane is mm. in Knights of the Old Republic. And Darth Bane is canon because he did appear in Clone Wars yeah. in a vision by Yoda who was looking and searching and figuring out the Darth, si- uh, it's a Darth, great the Darth side, the dark yeah. side. And Bane was voiced by Mark Hamill. All right, let's, let's look at this really quick. Okay. First appearance of Darth Bane. First appearance by Darth Bane. What we have here, they're saying the books. So which book? Darth Bane, Path of Destruction. Which comes out of what year? And then Star Wars, uh, Clone Wars, which is canon now. Uh, the books no, were... No, that doesn't sound right. Path of Destruction sounds like that came out after Knights of the Old Republic. It, I believe they did. But th- you know what? It's not popping up. Let me put first appearance... Is Darth, Darth Bane, Bane not even in Knights of the Old Republic? I thought he was. Yeah, because you oh no, you play as as Revan. You're you play Darth, as Revan and there's Darth Nihilus and uh, that kind of stuff, right? So maybe Bane, maybe Bane isn't in, in Knights of the Old Republic. Right. It's anyway. I, I don't know if he was uh, mentioned, but they they are bringing up the canon appearance in Clone Wars. Yep. And then they bring up the establishment of the Rule of Two. In the books, okay. which were legends, Fair which enough. were great Fair books. Enough. So maybe Revan is really the Jedi that I'm like the, might was be. first introduced there. It, it, it's interesting. There's that, so many that, stories that, that they thought about adding. Actually, Dave Filoni shot some stuff with Darth Revan uh, against uh, was it some bounty hunter or something? But there is like a Darth Revan like previs mm. that was made by uh, Clone Wars that never got used. I heard that. Yeah. That, see, I, I love all the stuff that they went into, and the fact that they did finally make Darth Bane canon mm. uh, from the Clone Wars off of the. I think it came because is the Plagueis books did canon? so well. No, Plagueis is canon. Yeah, because of Darth. Not the book. Oh, oh, of course, of course. But the of name. It, it, it's interesting. We're going. We're already right, but going. The book off, isn't. The book isn't. This is where. This is where it's hard for me. Yeah. It is. That's why we we, we, we referenced I've last week's show. The old Sith legend is Darth Plague is the wise. It's like you have these great books that came out that yeah. were under the Legends banner. Darth Plagueis is one of them. But Legends is because Legends is something that was only introduced when Disney bought Star yeah. Wars. Because, because all it was those, called the EU. It was the EU. It was the expanded universe. So we were all under the assumption that all of this was canon, and then when you get to Force Awakens being announced. Disney buying Lucasfilm, all those books because you had 30 years of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and, and Princess Leia running around. Yeah, like, what did they even have to do that? It seems like such a like, like, and I take over your lands and now the taxes yeah. are going to be 50% for exactly. you. And what? It's like, yo, like, relax. You haven't done anything yet. You haven't done anything. And I really like that story that no longer <laughs> yeah. exists. And, and, and that was a big really, thing. Yeah, I never really thought about it. They just came in like a conquering hero. They really did. They, they put their flag on Plymouth Rock and said, everybody else <laughs> out here, get that <laughs> F out of here. And a lot of the fans were upset, including myself, because then you have like, you know, that Timothy Zahn trilogy that we love that introduced us to all this, yeah. that first, started it, yeah. it's gone. You, you know, first of all, you bring up a really interesting point mm. and something I hadn't thought about before till now. Um, Pre-Disney buying Star Wars, mm-hmm. okay, a Star Wars conversation had no limits. Yeah. It had no limits. You know what? Because God, you're bringing that. I love this. I know where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah, Star Wars conversation had no limits because you could talk about Star Wars, and then you can bring in the books, mm-hmm. and you can bring in a comic, mm-hmm. and you can bring in this thing, and like there wasn't any like, no one ever really asked a question. Is it canon? Yeah, and now you get the. Well, actually, it's not canon anymore because <laughs> right, and you're right. like. Oh, so my fa- my right. favorite comic from the Dark Horse line is Dark Empire. I love Dark Empire. It's amazing. It's a great comic. There's two of them, too. I There's still part read it one sometimes. and part two. Yeah, I, I, I have it. Yeah, I still read it sometimes. And it's great. 
And it it's like flip through the pages, flip through the pages. Yeah. Gave you it gave you the Luke Skywalker a lot of people wanted in Last Jedi. Him, yeah. him taking an ad at down using the Force. It was great. It was great. He falls to the dark side. Falls to the dark side. He's discovers like, the the Emperor clones. He's just yep. The Emperor is cloned. You know, Leia's pregnant with the twins. You can't beat him, join him. It was really right. A, it was really if you can't beat him, join him and try to kill him from the inside. Yeah, and it it, it, it was great. That's one of my favorite. But stories. now you can't talk about it. No, it's not canon. And that's where we're at now. Right. So you say you're having a casual conversation. I mean, this must be frustrating for some Star Wars fans out there that maybe grew up on some of these books. Maybe they're our mm. age, maybe a little bit younger, found them. And they're at, let's say, Thanksgiving's coming up. And they're sitting there and they're like, I read a great – I picked this up at a mm. garage sale, right? Can you believe this Dark Empire is a great comic? And Luke Skywalker fell to the – and then the to whoever it is go, well, that's no longer canon. And then you're like – Wow, that ended this conversation. <laughs> right. I guess I can't right. enjoy that. Conversations pre the Disney acquisition had no limits. And Disney basically said, no, forget about all that. We're creating our own. And that some of the stuff that has been talked about and discussed on Jedi Council, some of the things that are well known from, from Harloff's point of view, which I happen to agree with a little bit sometimes, is that all that canon stuff that you're, you're telling me now we're getting new canon material that's going to tie to the movies. But, and they don't. Really? But, but the point is, is like that type of control mm. that Disney, without cause or reason, implemented on the Star Wars franchise is unnecessary. That's yeah. my point. Because if you look at Marvel and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. there is more permutations and, and weird things. And like if somebody says, oh, in the comic, you know, uh, uh, Bullseye plays is also... Uh, Daredevil, I guess it's like that. Oh, don't want to spoil it, but mm, it's okay. But anyway, um, nobody says, "Oh, but that's not canon." Right. It's just like, no, it's just Marvel. Mm -hmm. It's just Marvel. It's like, yeah, there's been 17 Spider Mans and 12 Batmans and six like Jokers or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. It's okay and to have fun with any one of them. Right. And we're gonna get to a point. I mean, this kind of touches on like, would they make an episode 10, 11, 12? But it's gonna get to the point where it. I feel personally we're gonna they're gonna run out of connections or movies or whatever and and, and maybe they can, they're like oh now we're doing new canon you know and then that's what I worry about you're gonna get to a point this where is a canon part two yeah where everything is in boogaloo and then you might as well start bringing in your references of DC and Marvel who like the kind total of reboots yeah they do reboots they do else worlds and they do you know oh, the, right, the sweaties right. out there that have like alternate realities and different whatever it may be because i i'm not that sweaty when it comes to you know that's our guy there yeah but what happens when that happens you know are they gonna new canon all those other books now no longer canon here's the new canon that we're off and running all over again that that was something disney implemented they and, opened up a pandora's box it's funny i never really thought about it i like don't think this. it can be closed again they opened up a Pandora's box when they put limitations around the one franchise that the imagination could not hold. How many times? I mean, I would play with my figures. Oh, man. Growing up. They just, you know, and they were on all new God, adventures. Were, and that's not canon. How canon killed Star Wars. I mean, you could is argue that, a, that. Is that a title for the show? Could be. Well, I thank can't. you to the first question. You know, you That's a to, great question. Yeah, you sparked a good little debate there. That was. So I want to go into uh, Johnny B String, at Johnny B String. <laughs> uh, great handle. <laughs> Rule of two, I'm more of a casual Star Wars fan, so don't blast me too hard if this is played out storyline. We're not going to blast you. There's no gotcha here. We're, yeah, it's all good. We've been gotcha yeah, on the other for, end. Yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, but uh, has there any been any stories where the Force and the dark side have to work together to ward off a threat to both? Oh, this is... Uh, Potential for awe moments, backstabbing, etc. I can think of a great one off the bat. Oh yeah, what is it? Because I yeah, I don't know. Um, Obi Wan and Asajj Ventress in Clone Wars. There it is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They had to work together. It's it's such. I forget about that one. It's such an incredible episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it's two episodes. Gotcha. Whatever. Um, but it's one of my favorite like little storylines. Mm -hmm. Is when um, Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, you know, um, reaches out to Asajj Ventress. And at first, it has to do with the storyline of Ahsoka being framed. Right. Um, now I remember. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, somehow they she, think it was Asajj. Right. And it, ultimately, Ahsoka walks from the from the council. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
That's a great episode. I yeah, forgot then, about that one. There's this one line. I forget. It's so funny, man. There's this one line where, uh, you know, Asajj asks Obi-Wan, and uh, she's like, so what do we do now? And he's like, run. And she's like, that doesn't seem very heroic of you. And he's like, I learned it from, you know, I learned it from the best. He's like talking about <laughs> talking her. Talking about her. Know, or something like that. It, yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. That's, right now, that's the only one that I can think of off the top of my head mm-hmm. um, that I thought was, you know, really, really cool was Obi-Wan and Asajj Ventress. Even though you can make the argument for all the hardcore nerds out there like us, yeah. that Asajj Ventress wasn't fully um, taken by the dark side mm-hmm. at the point where Obi-Wan reaches out to her because she had already been betrayed by Count Dooku. Mm-hmm. She was already on the run. Mm-hmm. She, she had lost her lightsabers. Mm-hmm. Right. She, she was basically like... She, she had been betrayed by the bounty hunter guild that she was with. So she was basically had nothing left. So you can, you can make the argument that the dark side wasn't as strong in her. Sure. But Asajj Ventress is of the dark side. There's also a version that's staring us at the, in the face mm. that everybody's seen. And I'm talking like billions of dollars okay. from the receipts of this movie. Kylo Ren and, and Rey teaming up to take out Snoke and the Praetorian Guards. They have to work together in that moment. That's true. True. It was forced. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was uh, for it. She had no other choice. It's one she of the thought better scenes in the movie. She it's... thought she turned Kylo Ren. Yeah. Nope. He just wanted to get rid of his master. Classic Sith move, by the way. Take out the master. Yeah. Get the new apprentice as the new master and Ray. So he was driven by a need using the dark side mm. to take over the galaxy. She thought he had turned to the good side. They were fighting together. Let's go together now and save the, the fleet. But at that moment, dark side, light side working together. And it's the, arguably the best move um, scene in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally love it. see that. I totally see that. <laughs> now, if there's any other canon stories out there, I don't know. I mean, I think that you also have Luke and Darth. You know, they're working together to take out – to take out uh, At the end of uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, at the end of Return of the Jedi. But you can also make the argument there that – He turned back to the light. That he turned back to the light. Yeah. But in on paper or if you're just looking at the eye test, he's in his Sith garb. He's in Darth Vader gar- yeah, yeah. garb. He's Darth Vader. He's Darth Vader. But I, I, I love that idea too. Um, just for shits and giggles, get your opinion on this. We had a great guest on one of the old Schmoes No Shows. Mm-hmm. David Gambino was a producer for Robert Downey Jr.'s company at the time. And we decided to do What's the Pitch, where you pitch a movie to him and see if he likes it. Now, this guy's not a Star Wars guy. Mm. So guess what I pitched? A Star Wars movie. Okay. And it was right when we were getting news that there was going to be a Rogue One, that we were going to get Star Wars stories that could be separate. Sure. And I pitched an idea taking place in the Old Republic where a Sith and a Jedi crash land together on a planet and they have to work together because there's a bigger mm. force out there. And we learn a little bit about each of them and they have to work together and that kind of stuff. I like that. Just as a standalone yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. It's a very it's not a, canon though. It's a really cool uh, uh, genre of episodes that they do in Star Trek a lot. Yeah, in Star Trek, there's a lot of those episodes of the two unlikely cohorts being stranded on an island, forced to work together. It's a classic cool. trope yeah, cool. in, in storytelling, like oh, yeah. which I always love, and yeah. I, I think we we brought up you know some what, kind of obvious ones. But what my dream non-canon movie is what the one that I've thought about forever, and it's like I'm more gonna pitch it the way that in Hollywood you actually pitch stuff, where it has to be like. It's this and that. Yeah, this meets that. It's basically um, a version of Munich mm-hmm. with a Sith instead of you know playing the Eric Banner role. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So getting ready to assassinate. Just like somehow something happened, pissed the wrong people off. Yeah. And you send a Sith with like a group of fucking lunatics yeah. to go hunt down seven very specific people. Mm. You know, so to really because like I love that idea. Yeah. I wonder if they were. Taking applications over at Lucasfilm. Well, look, um, we can turn this around. Look, we don't want to get, like, again, you guys know that here at Collider, we run a very um, respectable news service. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been hearing some things. And we, we have. keep them to ourselves for now because they're not confirmed. Right. There's um, some uh, There's some stuff, stuff going on. Going on. <laughs> <laughs> I know you Next guys, on the rule of two. You guys must hate it when we do that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. We hear or, things. Or but, like it because, look, it's like. You know, teasing something, master the something <laughs> elsewhere, <laughs> right? Like mm-hmm. Obi Wan tells, uh, "Oh, dude, by the way, on TBS this weekend, uh, they played um, 
uh, Phantom Menace. Oh, and, I missed uh, it. Damn it. I caught like the first 10 or 15 minutes. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there thinking because, of course, I own it. I could just, you know, watch yeah. my copy of it. Yeah. Um, but, man, that scene of, of Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon in that meeting room, you know. I love that scene. That's a great scene. Be mindful of the living force, Obi-Wan, you know. Yeah, and it opens with a great callback to the, I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah. yeah Be mindful that of your surroundings, Obi-Wan. Yeah. I, you know, much like when, when, they, when they, again, I'll, I can tie back. The sequel trilogy a to the... A Qui-Gon origin story would be so good. You know what? Something that Ken Nabsok pitched once that I think is great mm. is a Count Dooku origin story. Yeah, he loves Count Dooku. I, I love that idea because he was a Jedi. He was on the council. He was a master. Yeah. And then he 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 took on the mantle of Count yeah. because he wanted out. And I love that idea of going in there. How he was, Guess who his master was? Yoda. There's right. a lot there. Guess who there. his apprentice was? Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn. Can you imagine? Yeah, that'd be a great one. Like, Mad Sox totally right. Like, why aren't they doing stuff like that? I wonder if we get there. It's, what, it's the Big Mac is there, right? The Big Mac's all in there. Yeah. So, like, what's the Big Mac, right? Because, like, in the Big Mac, you got two all beef patties, special, special sauce, sauce, lettuce, lettuce cheese, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. <laughs> yeah, right? So, there's a formula <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah. There's a formula to it. Absolutely. Okay? I think part of the formula is the meat is the force. Mm-hmm. Okay, the special sauce I think are the lightsabers. Mm-hmm. I really do. Um, you know, uh, and then and then you have bounty hunters. I think is a big part of it. Bounty hunters, yeah. And like, ha- have you noticed that in these new movies, there's no bounty hunters? Yeah, they teased it a little bit in the Force Awakens when the guy makes the one phone call. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, which is actually like one of the. It's actually a pretty cool scene. You only get it for a fleeting little glimpse. Yeah, but the whole bounty hunter thing that there's like. It's almost like the bounty hunter is almost like the ultimate, like B plot, like in Star Wars, because mm-hmm. you have like this journey happening, right? This like conflict of good versus evil, and then you have this other little thing, the subplot of something trying to hunt you down too. And it could be good and bad depending yeah. on who's been hired. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That, that's and I another... love that there is canon stuff. There was in expanded editions where they, with you know, people would turn to Boba Fett even yeah. if you're in the rebellion, even if you're. In politics, or maybe on in the Senate or something, than shady dealings. I am the Senate. Yep. <laughs> it's I, I love the idea of Boba Fett and or any bounty hunter. Yeah. They would just work for themselves and they'll yeah. do whatever they want. All right. So to answer the question, we can think of a few Obi Wan, Asajj Ventress, mm-hmm. uh, Kylo, and Ray, which is and probably, Rey. Probably, probably the purest one in yep. terms of like the most literal one to the question. Mm-hmm. Then you have, I think, Vader and uh, and Luke. Mm-hmm. And I bet there's tons of canon. So canon and non canon now are expanded or legends. Maybe that story trope, as I said, was utilized because it is classic. It is it it is great when you have hero and villain have to work together yeah. for a bigger. I, I, I think there's a th- there's another one that maybe qualifies in terms of the movies, mm-hmm. and it's uh, Ray. I'm sorry, it's uh, Kylo and Leia. Mm. When, 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 like she, he's about to shoot the ship, and she feels him, mm-hmm. and then he like relents. Mm-hmm. And but then, the other, like, but the other guy comes in and shoots it. But like that's in the book, and it's really great because it's like their minds touch each other, and that's why he hesitates. You know? Yeah, there's like a moment there of good and evil yeah. or, or good or light and dark interacting with each other yeah. for the same goal. Right. You know? Yeah, I could, yeah. I, I'll buy it. Um, there, there, I hope that answered it. I think there's a lot out there. There could be even more for yeah. you guys out there listening at home who might know a little bit of the canon or legends. You want to drop those in the comments. I would love to read those because yeah. there are stories out there I would love to keep reading in the Star Wars saga, expanded, legends, canon. Or otherwise. All right, ready for your next one? I love this question. Yeah? Okay. I make sense for. This is at I make sense for. Mm. Something for discussion on Rule of Two, that scene in Empire when Vader sees the rebel power plant on Hoth and says, and I'm sure Skywalker is with them. Is it said anywhere how Vader became interested so fast in Skywalker? I love this question. It's easy for me. Because it does say it in the beginning of Empire in the opening crawl. Obsessed with finding young Skywalker. Yeah. Well, you know, Vader sends out him, probe droids, he everyone. He feels him from, as a force user when they're on the trench run. Yes, exactly. That's where. Yeah. 
I would argue that he feels his son at that moment. I mean, it's not you, – you don't get that yet. You don't get it be, until – yeah. But I think that when you first watch Empire, you get why he would be so obsessed with one pilot that managed to take down the entire Death Star only by virtue of the Force – that he became obsessed with the fact that there was another force user out there. I think that that's pretty well exposed in the script and it's, in the movie. It's beautifully telegraphed throughout two movies, and I'll tell you how. In the meeting area with Tarkin and those guys, Vader comes walking in as one of the Empire guys is going, you know, this station is going to put, you know, I'm going to yeah. paraphrase. This station is going to put terror yeah. across the universe. We have to use it. And Vader basically says... Don't be so sure of this technological terror. It means nothing. And significant to the power to the, of the force. To the power of the force, right? And guess what? Vader's right because guess what takes it out? A force yeah. user and yeah. Luke Skywalker. So of course Vader's going to be, who's that guy? Absolutely. And he's also behind him trying to take him out. And the force is strong with this one. Yeah. You know, Luke, trust me. And he turns off the targeting computer. He, makes, he literally says that the force yeah. is strong with this. The one. force is strong with this yeah, yeah. one. So, so that's and so it's a nice leap. Then you can yeah. take it. Vader survives, so flies he off. He knows he's a force user. And he needs to track him down. Need to track him down. Who is this guy that right. was able to take out this technological terror using the force? I need to know that guy. And you forget, or not forget, but um, it's also very clearly, um, you know, told that Darth Vader was the one who eliminated all the Jedi. Mm -hmm. So you can tell that that's like his thing. That's he his thing. He kills Jedi. Right. So we got a Jedi here or yeah. a Jedi in the making. I got to take him out. And then where was and I but, think it was. But to his point, mm. how does he know that his name is Skywalker? That's uh, that's a good question. I, I want to say, and again, this that's, is where it's hard to follow along with all the canon offshoots. Because his name is Skywalker too. There is something that they did the comic run Mm. The new canon comic Skywalker is definitely there. That's interesting. Yeah. When and I'm sure Skywalker is with them. Set your, he, set your coordinates for the Hoth system. General Veers, prepare your landing. Okay, but where, where's the, when's the scene in Empire where the Emperor talks to Vader? Because there they talk about Skywalker. They're in the asteroid field. They've already. So it's already way so past that. Past Hoth. Yeah. So it's like move, you yeah, know, move the past. Star Destroyer into yeah, a. Yeah, it's way out past of, it. It's yeah. way past it. You know, there was great disturbance in the force. We have a new enemy, Luke Skywalker. I have felt his presence. That's what Vader says. It's like the son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi. That's pretty. It's pretty. The son of Skywalker? That's what the Emperor says. Oh, yeah. Hold on. No, I, I know he says that, but how does. They might have changed oh, it in the wait, expanded. Maybe because that's a spoiler. If he well, says the son of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. The I am your father thing this wasn't is, dramatic irony. That was a that was a twist at when the moment it happened. There was a twist in the moment, but he again beautifully telegraphed. That's a little The Son of Skywalker. Dude, in the original version. Hold on, wait a minute. Did this guy just uncover for us um that in the re released version of Empire, the one that has uh, Ian McDarmid coming in. Ian McDarmid as the Emperor, do they speak spoil the I am your father thing it's because uh, it's, it's already so known the son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi because you don't know that that's Anakin Skywalker but yet. you know you don't know he's Anakin Skywalker you only know him as Darth Vader you just know that a Jedi master in Anakin Skywalker had an offspring right and that Darth Vader killed Anakin Skywalker Darth Vader according to Obi-Wan killed Anakin. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, so it wasn't. So that makes perfect sense. So, but so, it's beautifully again telegraphed, right? Because they're setting us up for that twist. But the emperor is aware, or somehow knew, like at that point, if you've never seen the movie before, mm. you're connecting the dots that the emperor also knew Anakin Skywalker. Yes. Gotcha. And it's great, and I love that. And I knew the whole. I know that whole emperor dialogue because I did the Star Wars trilogy movies. So and I played the emperor, so of course I know those 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 lines. Yeah, like inside and out. Is there a out. YouTube video of that out there? There is. There is of the whole thing. Pieces of it uh, yeah. uh, when we were at the very last Star Wars celebration in Orlando before the announcement that Disney was buying it. What's a good Google search term so the keys start typing? Star Wars trilogy in thirty minutes. Star Wars saga in sixty minutes is where we actually did it. That's so awesome. 
It's so much. I miss doing that. Yeah. And you talk about this is what's happening here. We all have problems. Some people have opinions about the new Star Wars movies, about the canon and the books. I have an, a, a bigger opinion over all of that is that Disney won't let us do that play anymore. Really? They, they, they won't let us do it. What, yeah. Like, have you guys wanted to put it together? Mm -hmm. We've been offering to go to... For fun, just to... Like, just for fun. Yeah. But... It's always fun to perform in front of an audience. It's always fun to perform in front of an audience. The fans love it. The, the fans that have seen it, it's the purest form of entertainment from the Star Wars movies because it's like a bunch of kids running around in your backyard playing with laser swords. I mean, but it, Disney won't let you do it. <laughs> Disney won't let us do it. We would have to sign off. Lucasfilm would always sign off on us to do it. And the reason they'd sign off... Because you would pay... For, uh, you, you would charge for tickets. We would charge, but it would always go to USC, which was the alumni, Patrick Gorman, Patrick T. Gorman, who created the show at USC. The person that was running the experimental theater at the time was named John Blankenship. Rest in peace, my friend. Mm. One of the greatest men I've ever met. Also taught George Lucas. So he was able to go to George Lucas and say, this is what we're doing. We're taking all three of the movies and we're doing them in 30 minutes on stage. Can we have permission? And Lucasfilm said, sure. All of the proceeds are going to go back to USC. That's and great. that's what we do. Say, Lucas, when Lucas was a good steward. He was a great steward. And we did it. We did a professional run for a year and a half yeah. at the Coronet Theater on La Cienega. Well, a year and a half. A year and a half. How many we, shows a week? Uh, it was three shows a week. We would do Friday nights and two on Saturday. And uh, we got great reviews. Variety reviewed us. They called us like the SNL of uh, kind of Star Wars. And everything, again, went back into alumni fund. It went to USC. And then, of course, Lucas. And Lucas was supportive of it. And he, we performed for Lucas. We, and, and I met him. He, The creator watched us do this thing at Skywalker Ranch. And we did it all those years, and he was just, that's great. He was writing Revenge of the Sith at the time when we performed for him. I mean, you talk about the bucket list. Yeah, that's awesome. That's one of them. That's Met George awesome. Lucas, saw it, did my Obi-Wan and Emperor for him, and he loved it, and he talked to us for a while. We did it for THX and ILM. We went to those uh, offices, those, those big studios, did four shows for them. Lucas snuck in again and watched it. He watched it three times. Wow, that's great. It's great. So now we can't get it because Disney probably doesn't want us to, well, I don't know. They, they don't want you, you to can, make money. They don't want us to make money. And believe me, do you know how much I got paid a show? $30. Yeah. You were doing it for the love. I didn't need, I mean, the money was fine. It's like, you know what I did? I would, I spent all of it after the show on drinks. <laughs> right. That's, you that's know, what so I did. I've also met Lucas. Yeah. And um, look, everybody knows George Lucas is one of my f heroes, absolute mm. heroes. I think he's the greatest. I call him two things. He's the only one of only two truly independent filmmakers that, that have gone mainstream. Mm -hmm. I would say it's him and Robert Rodriguez mm -hmm. um, and just my hero. But the one time that I got to actually have quite a bit of time with him, it didn't go so well. Mm. Why is that? You know, I don't want to get into it too much, but um, like, I guess I had such high lofty expectations of what it would be like to meet him. Mm -hmm. And, um, we met under incredible circumstances where it was like an introduction, like, hey, you should take Mark Fernandez seriously. He does mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. I was much younger at the time, mm -hmm. much, much, much younger, but I was still doing some cool projects. And um, and it was just like, it just, it, it seemed like he didn't want to interact with me or mm -hmm. at all. Like, was bothered that, you know, that I was even being introduced to him and that I wanted to strike up a conversation or just. Right. He was just having a bad day. Like, it just didn't seem like he wanted to talk. Yeah. You know, which is fine, you it's, know? Yeah. Well, you weren't doing his Star Wars movies in 30 minutes <laughs> right. in front of him. Right, right, right. Maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, but... We were doing Star Wars clothing for him, though. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, interesting. We, yeah, we had the license for... Um, for clothing. Well, anyway, look, the, that's all Ewoks under the bridge. Right. I okay. love that saying now. Yeah. That's another hashtag. Ewoks <laughs> under the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you uh, want to go to the next question? Let's do the next question. Because I love now this. I got sad thinking about George. And George, if you're out there listening to us, like. <laughs> First off, why? Like, yeah, how, are you, did, how do you have the time? Yeah. You know, and we love you. And we would love to sit down and chat with you. And we would love to interview you. You got to be in the imagine? Lost Jedi. Because look, I think the Lost, what. I, I'm gonna drop a scoop for the for the listeners here. Oh, there's been actual internal discussion, exploration, mm -hmm. and possible 
even budgeting mm -hmm. for an exploration of actually putting together the the the, uh, the Lost Jedi documentary. It's an interesting project. Yeah, and I'm sure Riley would want to be in on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we've we've talked. Yeah, yeah. We have talked. Okay, so anyway, the next question. Next dropping question. Dropping bombs today. Dropping on bombs. I love this teasing things. <laughs> dropping we, bombs. But we we kept our mouths shut on the little thing that we heard today. Which yeah, is yeah. Very, we'll, very everybody will hear about it if yeah. it uh, goes. Uh, Alejo or at Alejo underscore no underscore number mm. uh, writes us hashtag rise to start, which oh, I nice, love. Nice. Rise. Is it just me or does anyone else get frustrated when Poe decides to retreat at the end? The whole point of the assault on the weapon was to buy more time for the others to live. Instead, he solidified their, their death by retreating. Thankfully, Luke came. But what if he didn't? So he's saying Poe retreated. At the end, on crate. Yeah, pose pose a sore subject for you. I, it's funny because I love Oscar Isaac. I think he's a he's, great he's, actor. He's phenomenal, and he does a great job portraying Poe. Mm -hmm. I just I, much more in the second film than in the first one. In the first one, he's okay. He's he's fine. And he was supposed to die in the first yeah, one. Yeah, the first he one wanted he wanted to stay. He's really only there in the beginning and the end. He's fine in the first one. Mm -hmm. His his the way he was written in the second one. To me, is the most insult. It's one probably the most insulting Star Wars character. Like it borders on 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 Jar Jar for me. Wow. See, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I can't. It borders on Jar Jar for me. So if, if you think about him, he goes headstrong into the dreadnought at the beginning. He wants to take him out. We lose a lot of resistance fighters. A lot of people die. General Leia says. You have to live to fight for another day sometimes. That's the message he gets. So at the end on crate, he realizes they're outnumbered. You have to live to fight for another day. That's why he retreats, comes back in. Luke comes, gives him a little bit more time with his force projection. That's the way I read it. I can almost live with the – like even though a lot of people died on the Dreadnought mm -hmm. attack, I can almost live with that. Mm -hmm. What I can deal with is what happens with this little mutiny on the ship. That is the dumbest – most poorly written, weird exposition of right. a character that I think I've ever seen in Star Wars. Yeah. Because at least Jar Jar Binks, like, you understood his motivations and, and like, he was a consistent character. He just wasn't executed all that, you know, great. You know, he had, he had a, a slightly, you know, um, sort of, I don't know, weird voice, right? Mm -hmm. You know, some may say was even, like, had hints of, yeah, you know, of, yep. of some... Ethnic, uh, ethnic, uh, anyway. Ethnicity and yeah, yeah and, and ra just, uh, racial undertones. Yeah, that weren't necessarily appropriate. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. same thing with like uh, the Trade Federation guys, right? You know, I mean, yep. there's a little bit of that out there. But Jar Jar, you understood what he was doing. I mean, he just he, he was just kind of stupid. Yeah. Um, with Poe, I just I don't get it, and I don't get the fact that nobody seems to hold him accountable for any of it. <laughs> I'm gonna follow this question up. By another question from David McKay at ch channel 019, Mark is very critical of Poe yeah. in The Last Jedi. <laughs> Thanks, what yeah. does he think would have happened if Poe hadn't led the assault on the Dreadnought and the Resistance fleet discovered they couldn't escape the First Order, who now have a fully operational fleet killer in that dread Dreadnought? So, so, so kind of like to follow up on my point, I think that a more consistent storyline, mm -hmm. right, because it's all about consistency in characters. Like the characters tell you – what choices they would probably make, mm -hmm. right? To me, um, Poe would have been far more heroic if he chose to bury his ego, find why uh, um, Laura Dern's character and Leia were so close, understand why Laura Dern's character was a good person, mm -hmm. and figure out a way to overcome his temptation to the dark side and cause mutiny mm -hmm. to actually work things out with her or figure out her point or a, almost let her do her plan. You know, like that's really where the problem is because I do believe Leia calls him back, mm -hmm. you know, and if he believes, look, I'm going to stay out here one more time just so I can take out this dreadnought. But when he comes to the ship, he's got remorse understands the lesson in why he caused so many lives and felt the remorse of all those lives 
and decided to be better when he got back on the ship mm -hmm. in their escape attempt from, from the First Order, that would have been a more interesting character arc for him. Not to run this subvert operation, uh, cause mutiny, send Finn and, and, and the girl out there to like take down the shields or stop the tracking system. Mm -hmm. None of it worked. Right. So he was right back to square one. It was t absolutely terrible. I, I've heard all of this and I can look at it on the outside as, as somebody that does like The Last Jedi I'd say it was underdeveloped I agree I, I think there there was stuff there I think you could have easily easily had Holdo go no dude this is what we're doing like and him feel bad that the people died. He, yeah. He's got no remorse. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It does yeah. it does stick out a little bit. Again, it doesn't land on me as as strongly. Um, I do see an arc there. I liked um, when I walked out. The original feeling I had when I walked out was you had Luke and Ray doing their kind of thing, right? Master apprentice, mm. and Leia Poe was their master apprentice. She was giving him knowledge. It. It didn't exactly land. I will give you that. Well, go follow him. He's made yeah. all the great decisions so far. <laughs> it was. It was. If yeah. you want to die, that's your guy. Yeah. <laughs> I I get it. I I, tr I truly get so, it. So just to be clear with this with this person asking the question, mm. my issue isn't so much with the destruction of the dreadnought. Like, mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah. Okay. And like, I get the impulse. And that's why I like the scene with him and Leia, because you can't have that scene without him making a mistake. Right. Where him and Leia saying, like, sometimes you got to, um, you know, live to fight another day or whatever it is that she tells him. It's an important lesson. It is. Yeah. He doesn't internalize that lesson. Mm -mm. He's like, oh, your lesson's stupid. He does, because he's upset. He sends Rose and Finn out to go do their thing. Leia then gets blown out in space, yeah, yeah, uses the two. force, and... Leia Poppins is what they call her, coming back in. I yeah. can live with all that. I can live with all that. I can't live with a character that you're telling me is heroic mm -hmm. and aspirational when, in fact, he is like – has no moral center. Yeah. He, his is the most underdeveloped and the, the most problematic for me, I will say. If you look yeah. at if and you Oscar look at the arc, is great as – Of course. Him. He's he's fantastic. I hope he has yeah. more to do in the, in the next one. We've said that about Finn. By the way, a great shout out to um, somebody who was listening to Rula 2 from last week when we were kind of speculating of episode 9. This just came to me. Um, uh, on Instagram, he tagged us both. He created this figure of um, – I'm going to give the shout out. I'm going to bring it up. Okay. Created the figure of what – after he saw Force Awakens, he went, I have this idea for Finn. And that idea was um, he created this – look at this. His own custom figure of an undercover Finn. Oh, in, nice. Because of your uh, fan – your, your, He, he had yeah. already started doing it. So when I brought it up, he tagged us. That's cool. And said uh, – uh, let me go to that comment here. You know, uh, Mark Fernandez and Riley heard you guys talking Rule of Two about Finn going underground. The second I walked out of The Force Awakens back in 2015, I started working on this concept. I saw his character donning some Stormtrooper armor that only he could modify, i.e. the helmets don't filter out gas, and hunting down Phasma. Wishful thinking, as we all agree, he was squandered in a bit in The Last Jedi. Anyway, thought you'd dig it. I'll tag another pic of him for us. So that's, that's A cool. Custom Figures. That's really cool. At A Custom Figures. If you want to check that out, it's... We, uh, first of all, maybe A uh, Custom Figures can make custom figures for us of something. I mean, come on. Yeah. That would be really cool. So you it's AC Custom Figures, Adam Crone. Adam Crone, yeah, A-D-A-M-C-R-O-H-N. Adam, thank you very much. That was very cool that you tagged us. I I'm glad yeah. I got it in there. Yeah, let's see how we can make a custom figure. I love these yeah. custom figures. I'm all yeah. down with that. We should talk. Uh, yeah. If you want to hit me up, I'll uh, – yep, I'm following him now. Boom. Um, <laughs> cool. that, was, that was a great little conversation. Next question. Next question is uh, – this comes from uh, at J – it's so hard, some of these. Justin Gilmore, at J Jill Yoda – 900. Mm. What character or storyline from Legends would you like to be adopted into canon? I would like to see Jedi Master K. Crook from the original Clone Wars series and the Republic and Legacy comic brought back. Mm. I don't know that character too well, so apologies to you, Justin. I pretty much gave my answer. I think they need to make I, – I would take Darth Plagueis, that book, and make it canon. I'd just take the Legends sticker off 
and put canon right on there. And just make it a movie? It's the greatest. I've never read that. I've read like the first like 200 pages. Like, um, It's all about Palpatine. No, no, I know. No spoilers. It's so, it's so fantastic. I didn't get to the Palpatine part. Um, mm. I read it up until uh, Plagueis was like in a Han Solo type situation. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he was like on a on a uh, smuggler uh, uh, ship. Yeah. And he like gets angry at everybody and does some bad stuff to them. Right. Then, you know, that's where I stopped reading. But I, it's just reading makes me fall asleep. You know, like uh, yeah. the older I get, the easier it is to fall asleep while I was reading. But I, I do every, you know, it's, it's, it's Harloff's favorite uh, Star Wars book. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like, you know, Plagueis is immune, which is a, a, immune, a yep. species in uh, the, the Star banking Wars. Guild. The banking, the banking guild. guild. His rise is interesting. Young Sheev Palpatine, he's great in it. It's it's a wonderful story. I love it. I would use that. Uh, I like the idea. Uh, you know, we've talked about the idea of like movies going back, like what happens after Return of the Jedi leading up to mm. the 40 years between that and Force Awakens. We're getting The Mandalorian, so mm. that's great. I always like the idea. I don't know. People did kind of get a little up when I said, you know um, – What's his name? Why can't I, Bucky Barnes? Why can't Sebastian Stan being a young Luke Skywalker? I don't see why you couldn't adapt the Timothy and Zahn books. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I was going with it. They're, those are fun. Darth Bane again, Rule of Two. I would adapt those. Darth Bane, yeah. the creation of the Rule of Two, the Sith only two. Why does Yoda say that to, to Mace Windu at the end of Phantom Menace? Always two there are. Yeah, one so, master, so, one apprentice. So if um, if 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 Disney came to me with a blank check and said, Mark, you know, we thank you for the work that you and Mark Riley do mm. and that Christian Harloff they, and Ken Napsok do. And they love us. Yeah. They love us so much. <laughs> I said, Mark, you know what? I'm going to make your dreams come true. Here's okay. a blank check and you can make one Star Wars movie. What is it? Okay. Oh, shit. Um, That's good. That's a good question. So my gut. My my gut is that you know what, I would do, the Obi Wan movie. Okay. Okay, but what I kind of really want to do mm. is the Yoda movie. I love your take on the Yoda movie. Just yeah. the fact that you love it so much. I mean, because yeah, again, a young Yoda. The movies when people hear Han so- young Han Solo movie, a lot of fans are like, we don't need that. Mm. Boba Fett movie, which was the news that mm. came out. Kathleen Kennedy finally confirmed that it's dead. A lot of people are like, good. Yeah. Did want a Boba Fett movie. I mean, Yoda's like... I have that same thing. Where Yoda, I'm when like, he was young, he was uh, he was reckless. He was reckless. The only reason he could identify um, the problems that Anakin would fall down is because he'd lived through them before. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's a great point. You know, it's so... It's very Yoda, interesting. Yoda was reckless. And Yoda, like, really... The story of Yoda going from Padawan to Master, mm-hmm. I think, would be fascinating. That's that's pretty good. Uh, you know, but but if I had the money, like if they told me here's the thing, I would try to make an Obi Wan movie that's so good and so perfect mm-hmm. that then they would have to give me the Yoda movie second. That's great. Yeah. I love that. I think honestly, I think I would make a movie about Rula Two with Darth Bane, mm. one standalone. The creation of see him wipe out. Yeah, you'd go past the saga. I'd go past the saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like you're saying outside the saga. Because, outside the saga. Because I'm still. Within you're still the saga. noodling in the saga. I'm I, still in the saga. Yeah. I'd go back. I'm really interested in seeing why there's the birth of all this. The birth of all this. The, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the first Jedi, the first Sith. The the the. What, why did that create a war? What did that do to the politics of the universe and the right. galaxy? I like the idea of seeing the formation of the rule of two. And yeah. a Sith. You would have less expectations and less audience pressure mm-hmm. with that idea yes. than I would have with Yoda Obi- or Obi Wan. You Obi-Wan. have a tall order ahead of you. Yeah, but that's okay because we're playing with house money right now. We're so playing we can with do house this. money. That's I've pitched it, that, my Obi Wan movie before, right? Yeah, you did, and it's with, with Qui Gon's there. Yeah, Qui Gon, and then Qui Gon convinces uh, Obi Wan that he's gonna like save Anakin. Yeah, I love that so much. Yeah. It just kind of brings it. What so I love so much. Never be saved is like you have to. It, you have to bring the boy back. It it brings that that arc, that character arc of Qui Gon saying he is the chosen one. Yeah. Like I know he's going to bring yeah, balance so to the Force, and there's going to be some death. And yeah. So Disney, like, just steal that. It's I, such I a don't simple get it. pitch. 
Let me go to your point here. We got yeah, another great uh, question. Go ahead, go ahead. And it's, uh, oh, and he's from Greece, so I'm going to butcher your name. I am so sorry. Temis Algiru. I, at T H E M I S A R G Y R I O U. Sorry about it. <laughs> Hello, guys from Greece. I, I, uh, I don't miss that show of yours. Do you think we're going to see Obi Wan in nine? And they just keep it secret really good. Or well, they keep the secret really good. What do you think? Uh, and sorry for your English. Uh, of course not. Um, thank you for, for writing out to us. So, on deck here mm. Obi Wan, Force Ghost Obi Wan. Ewan McGregor, maybe in some makeup, what have you, aging in nine. I don't think so. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think Obi-Wan's coming. I don't think so. I I think think Yoda's coming back, and I think, obviously, Luke Skywalker is Force Ghost. I think kind of in the vein of that Scarlet Witch show and the Loki show, Mm -hmm. that you might be onto something of folks coming to the Mandalorian show. Mm Mm-hmm. Mandalorian show? Mm-hmm. Folks coming? <gasps> mm. Like Obi-Wan? I don't know about Obi-Wan. Okay. I'm thinking more like... Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking more like um, Lando. Lando? Okay. Like a young Lando? It depends what the timeline is. In Return of the Jedi? No, no. Or uh, uh, Mandalorian? Mandalorian. Takes place right after Return of the Jedi, so it's going to have to be a younger Lando. So well, if we're if we're talking Billy D. Williams coming in, because Billy Billy right, D. is right. in nine. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I'm not sure about Lando, but that would be cool. I mean, I think you'd, Jabba. Jabba. Yeah. I think you definitely get Jabba. Why not Mandalorian? Yeah. I mean, come on, we talked. You get about the this. huts. You get the huts. You gotta have the huts. You might get Waddle the hut. Hmm. Okay. I like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, see, I'm looking at your face. It's like you're ready to spill some beans here, but not quite ready. Maybe there's another uh, uh, you know, stay tuned. Thank God we don't have that big an audience. You know what I mean? Because like we're we're uh, we're touching on stuff we what? probably shouldn't touch on. You know what? It's funny. We do have a big audience, right? Dude, those podcast downloads yeah. are phenomenal. Yeah, they are phenomenal. Thank you very much, guys. For yeah, that, by the way, really, really, thank you. Yeah. Um, All right, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> if you had to choose, this is There's a lot at, of questions. I know. We at might not even get to our topic. We'll maybe do that next week. We're going to do it next week. Okay. I've realized that because guess what? We are at one hour and one minute right Ooh, now. I'm sorry, guys. There it is. So, you know what? This is great, though. We've taken a lot of questions, gone down a lot of different Star Wars rabbit holes. The, these we topics. Could this, we could do this show with just questions. Yes, because absolutely. Like, and we'll do that that topic for next week. It's and I'll tease topic. it it's right good, at the end. It's a good topic. Yeah. I'll tease it right at the end because then you guys could hashtag again rule of two yeah. and you can ask us questions on that particular topic. Uh, at MT, uh, MTV Movie Critic, or no, MT Movie Critic. Sorry, I have the MTV generation in my mind. If you had to choose one new release for Star Wars next year to see first, what would it be? The Mandalorian? The Return of the Clone Wars or Episode Nine? Thanks, thanks, and keep up the great work. That's an easy one for me. <laughs> no, that's easy. Episode Nine, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. Episode Nine. You know, I, I did. It's a good hesi- question. It's a good question. It's a great but- question. Th- one to throw out very simply, but I did hesitate a little bit with Mandalorian. Did you? Went, nah, Episode Nine. Well, maybe because you get 10, 12 hours of it. As you say, you're you get getting the whole a ten-hour movie. Yeah. You you really are. You're getting ten episodes, ten hours of a uh, the, what can be a ten hour. And the movie. Clone Wars thing is probably cool too, but no, for me, I mean, come on, it's like I have so much writing on yeah. on J.J. Abrams writing the ship. Yeah, that there's no way that that wouldn't be the first thing I choose. I I did the Again, same. This thing. is all about the saga films. It's right? all about the saga film. I did the same thing though with my uh, Patreon account. I went, hey, you guys are more excited for the Mandalorian. Let's think about it. Last Jedi, a little divisive. What are we here? Now we see Mandalorians can take place after Return of the Jedi or Episode Nine. Everybody's like, Episode Nine, dude. Like no question. I was like, well, that topic fizzled out, <laughs> which is fine. It's uh, I get it. Do we have um, time for one more? Or do we? Are let's, we out of questions? One more because I love this question. There's a lot of questions, right, but right. I love this one. Uh, Adam Galloway at uh, at music M for N rise. I get the hashtag rise with John Williams retiring from Star Wars after nine, which he's going to do. And and by the way, he's on the, the mend. I don't think we ne- we need to say that. Great John Williams. News, yeah, you told me that early. Great news. We, last week we did report that he yeah. was he had felt fallen ill. We didn't know. We didn't have much else. But now it's reported. Yeah. He's Take back. time to 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 f- to get better, relax, yeah. spend it with your family, enjoy the life. Like, yep. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm yeah. so glad to hear he's You've doing well. You've done your bid. 
But with John Williams, he will retire after Star Wars After 9. Who is his Padawan for future films? Or will it be more the Powells and Giacchinos, where it's a variety of composers emulating Williams' style? What about Alan Silvestri? So the question is, who's mm. the heir apparent? Who's the Padawan that's going to take on the mantle? Now, Giacchino did Rogue One. John Powell, one of my favorite and, composers. And Giacchino does a lot of uh, MCU stuff as well. And he does a lot of Disney stuff, The Incredibles. The Incredibles, absolutely. He did, he did Jurassic the heir, World. Giacchino's the heir apparent. Giacchino uh, is the heir apparent. Because Alan Silvestri is John Williams's. Um, you know, what is it? Uh, not colleague, but he's like his, pretty much. He, he's his contemporary. He is. Right. Because Silvestri for you guys. I love Silvestri, by the way. Silvestri is been around for. He's a great forever. His, one of my favorite movies of the year. I think push comes to shove and I'm going to get a lot of slack for this, but I'm just going to say because it it's the truth and everybody has their own opinion. I know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. My favorite movie of the year is Ready Player One. Yep. OK, so far. Uh, it just speaks to me very, very personally. Mm -hmm. And Alan Silvestri did an incredible job with the score of that film. Alan Silvestri's Avenger score incredible. is one of the best. In incredible. And I would even say I would put his Captain America yeah. theme over the Avengers. I love his Captain America theme. It's incredible. Back to the Future, Alan Silvestri. Yeah, yeah. Alan Silvestri is, for me, almost like number two. Like he, in a way. He, I would say he's my number two. Yeah. In pure enjoyment of a theme... Yeah. That Back to the Future theme is legendary. It's, that Avengers, legendary. Ready Player One, great, great yeah, score. Yeah. The Avengers is a better uh, score than Ready Player One. Yeah, I would agree with that. Ready Player One was just my personal favorite movie of the year so far. Yeah. Um, the the other name he mentions is John Powell. Powell uh, did the, the score for Solo, um, although John Williams did do the theme for Han Solo. Uh, what I love about Powell is he did a great score for How to in, Train Your Dragon. In Solo, Star Wars always has the best trailers. Oh, they really like, do. No matter what prequel, sequel, original trilogy, whatever the hell you like, mm -hmm. all the trailers are awesome. Yeah, awesome. they really are. The trailer for Solo has, I think, one of my favorite pieces of music ever used in a Star Wars anything. Oh, yeah? Like the... Jung, jung, tch, 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 yeah. Tch, tch, don't you, you know, I don't know if that was actually from the movie or just for the that. just for the th the trailer. I know I don't I don't know. We 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 didn't really watch Solo that much because but that, I saw but it that, twice. But that trailer, you know, the music I'm talking about <laughs> yep. for the trailer, yep. right? Where there's a voiceover. Yeah, it's of such him a great. Like, who, dun, who, dun, 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 dun. I think it was Powell. To be yeah. honest with you, I think it was Powell. Such a great yeah. piece. Um, he's he's really good. Uh, as far as I, I think we both answered it in a roundabout way, but Giacchino, I think, is yeah. the heir apparent. He's the heir apparent because he's younger and he's just he's, he's getting younger. A lot of stuff. He's Doctor Strange, Spider Man Homecoming, yeah, great Jurassic job World, great job. Fallen Kingdom, he did as well. He did obviously the Star Trek reboots, or yeah, he's getting the gigs that John Williams used to get when he was his age. Correct. You he's, know, he's so good. But yeah, I mean. You know, now, it, it, now you got me pumped. I think Alan Silvestri, though, might actually do a Star Wars movie. Before it's yeah, all I, I would love for him to do it. Yeah. I mean, because you, some of the, the he's history. He's in the family. He's like in the Disney thing. Some of the history of uh, like when Steven Spielberg sits down with Robert Zemeckis for the first showing of Back to the Future. He had some temp tracks going in there. And, you know, there was conversation. You know, are, you need something like Williams for this. But, you know, Zemeckis got Silvestri, and Silvestri created some music, i.e. the Back to the Future theme. And Zemeckis fooled Steven Spielberg, his producer on Back to the Future, who watched it and went, yeah, you need music like that. You know, that, that reminds me of John Williams. And Zemeckis goes, good, because I hired Alan Silvestri, my guy, who's been with me since Romancing the Stone and God Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. God, yeah. See, isn't that a great movie? Yeah. This guy's been with me, and I asked him, you got to give some, you know, we got to get a theme here. And Spielberg went, really? Great. <laughs> and then that started <laughs> Spielberg's relationship with him. So yeah. fast forward 40 years, to Ready, Player, Ready one. Player One. They did a great job. You know, he went, I'm because Spielberg oh, being God, the best. I just got chills thinking about that. He's that movie. filming two movies, The Post and Ready Player One, and he gets Williams, his boy, to do The Post. And he gets a vestry for Ready Player One. Yeah. Who pulled in that, oh, man, that like, little moment for you Back saw to the Future. Player One, right? Of course, yeah, I've seen it twice. So you know, three times actually now. You know that's much more enjoyable on home video when I watch it with my fiance. Oh, is it? Is I it, just I, yeah, I had she fun like with it? it. She loved it. Yeah, it's she loved it. it. Some people didn't like it. I, I really had fun anyway, with it. But 
that one scene where he uses the Zemeckis cube mm-hmm. and like the plays music, the music. The music just goes whoa, and it goes. Yep, and it's that it's that and beginning then, like, of the Back then, like, to the Future. Your entire emotional state just changes, mm-hmm. and then like all the creatures start rewinding, and you get six extra minutes, and it's, it's great. It, 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 the way he just throws it in there. You it's, know, and like, oh my God. And again, Alan Silvestri, when he's doing, uh, he gets hired for the Avengers, right? The original Avengers movie. Yeah, this when, is a great, incredible job. Incredible on. score. But there's a moment, um, I love his score because he also did the first Avenger. He did Captain America, the first Avenger. It's like, da 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 There's a moment in the Avengers where Cap, you know, is him and Iron Man taking care of the the the, the shield carrier. And the, and the jets are out and whatnot. They're trying to fix it together. And Cap jumps over this huge gap, you know, where he could just fall to his death, right? Yeah. But he jumps over and Sylvester just, just weaves in his Captain America score right. to, to, to score his leap. And then goes into the Avengers theme. I mean, he's so good. He's incredible. He's absolutely so, incredible. That was great. Those right. were the questions. Hold on. Let's get one more. Let's get you one want more? more? Yeah, All let's, right. do, let's do one more. We, we, do we have a time ones. machine. We have a time machine here. Yeah, we don't You know have what? Any. Let's try to answer these quicker. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I actually wrote that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So when is Ruler Two dropping? I'll be the first. Uh, that was an old one. Yeah. Let me see. I think Are we I wrote good on them questions? down. I think. Uh, Look, we come to the end of the line. We came to the end of the line. Yeah. I so think that means we next time, all we, them. next time we ask for questions, ask them questions. Yeah. We need it. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes it's like. There's only so much Star Wars, and even though it can send us off in a million different ways, that's what I love ways, about those you know, questions. To quote, to quote the Joker, mm-hmm. sometimes all you need is a little push. That's absolutely right. You guys, you can hashtag Rule of Two anytime, yeah. anytime. Ask on, us some questions. Tag us as well at Riley Around at Mark Fernandez. Hashtag Rule of Two. We will answer them. You can drop them in the comments section of the YouTube video, which is up on Collider Podcast channel. This is Rula 2. It's episode 13. That was a great episode. I had fun answering these questions. Anything else, uh, last words you want to say, Mr. Fernandez? No, just keep keep listening. Keep um, keep contributing. Yeah, contribute questions. Get our, you know, get our imaginations going. Get our imaginations going. Yeah. You, you just <coughs> instigated an hour-long conversation off of your wonderful questions. Make sure you rate and subscribe to the show. Share it with your friends. Give us a five-star rating. It's on the podcast one Collider Jedi Council feed. This yeah. is the at official option. Yeah. At least four stars. At least four stars. If you had, <laughs> if you smiled at least once, that's worth four stars in my opinion. So this does drop on Wednesdays. It is Collider's Jedi Council Rule of Two. We will be back next week for a Wednesday show. Mark Fernandez is going on a Sith mission towards this week. Uh, we'll talk about that when you get back. All oh, right, because we uh, we yeah we we're doing a, oh yeah yeah we record little that housekeeping. We did record this early, so. If some big Star Wars news happened, yeah. and we're not talking about it. It's because it hasn't dropped yet, yeah. and we are pre-recording this. But you will get it r- bright and early on Wednesday. We hope you enjoyed Episode 13 of Rule of Two. We will see you next week. Rise.